In the name of Allah, most gracious, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dr. Sultan Anna General Director of Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research, I welcome you today to a unique lecture today under the title China's Aspirations in the Arabian Gulf delivered by one of the political science thinkers in UAA. He is a prominent and he graduate, where he graduated many national cadres and one, I am one of them. I'm happy today to welcome Professor Mohammed bin Weiden, United Arab Emirates University. Ladies and gentlemen, China is one of the main characters in, in the current or the status quo today, the quality and paradigms achieved decision makers worldwide uh, and observers and academics interested in the Asian affairs to create and to question the, about the importance of this country attitude, its foreign policies, that's to anticipate the future because China is a nom nominated to be one of the polars that will lead the world. So. Understanding the strategic interests of China at the worldwide level and the Gulf area, Arab Gulf area, particularly, will help us uh, disintegrate uh, the aspirations of China in the Arabian Gulf. So, understanding these interests and the Chinese approach and behavior will come through specialists in this file and in UAE. The leader and the pioneer in this is uh, Professor Mohammed bin Hwaden, who uh, we are all uh, anxious to hear from you. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And thank you very much for all the present attendees and uh, gra grateful to the Emirates Center and dear brother, His Excellency Dr. Sultan Naimi, the general director of the center for his interest in this subject and uh, vigilance and care to reflect uh, the uh, and uh, uh, highlight the Emirates thinkers. Happy to be among you. Faces familiar to me. Maybe the masks are uh, can't make me not able to recognize the faces, but w but hundred percent without these masks, seventy seventy five percent of your faces are familiar. Either students or of my students or colleagues whom I appreciate highly in the field of thinking analysis of politics. Today we are talking about, uh, uh, not like any other state, we are talking about China. And you know, realize and aware of the size of China as I name it, and as it is named by some interested uh, academics, is the super power in the making superpower in making. Till now, it's not superpower, but the makings are already there. China, population is very, very significant, ambitious military army and force, uh, in significant in industrial power, amazing industrial power, political power, as uh, it is a permanent in, uh, member in the United Nations, veto state, it is coherent and stable inside. These elements will help any country to be uh, in effective and leading even in the uh, world status and regime. China lacks some things regarded by analysts and followers and observers that these things will uh, are still uh, interrupting or preventing China from becoming superpower. We'll talk about this later, but quickly, maybe. W the military power and might is a still a regional military power, not, did not reach a universal or worldly power, and this limits its power to be superpower. In addition, the soft power is still limited and can't uh, to uh, compare the soft power of the United States of America, the, the pr most the prominent superpower now. But the Chinese are working on this, and it's uh, thinkable, not ruled out they will reach this. But it, it takes some time, 
and China also lacks the model. They are working on this uh, to find the model, to make themselves a model so that others follow. These are the sources of superpowers. The United States, as a superpower, is a model for many countries. China is not a model now, to some countries only, and the, the, her, its role is limited. So it did not reach this level to call it superpower. When will it be? It is uh, a big question, trillion dollars question, but one day it will reach. Sooner or later, it will become, and the Chinese know this. So they are clever and smart, and they are moving slowly but confidently, and they don't want to threaten anyone. This is the Chinese uh, intelligence known by Mao Tse Song, Taiwan. We will wait, Taiwan. Even if it takes 100 years, we will wait for Taiwan. Deng Xiaoping also said, Color of the cat is not important as long as it catches uh, the mice. People know where are they going. China knows where is it going and its destination. And what makes people today to be more careful about understanding China is that China has uh, leadership represented in Qing, Qing Ping, Xi Jinping which is ambitious to go as far as possible and to take China to, to beyond Ding Xiaoping. St Ding Xiaoping strategy, hide yourself. Now it's not hiding itself anymore. Now Xi Jinping era and era wants to show itself as a dreamer and this dream will come true and it's a glorious state and wants to restore its glory. It is her, it's her, her, it's, it's right, and all nations have the right to, as long as this will enhance their status in the worldwide regime, as long as they are not posing any threats to others. This is China. So if this is China, how does China look at us in the Arabian Gulf, which is more important for us now? China, I read it as I read it today, that is interested in the region, uh, focusing uh, primarily on, on the industrial aspect, industry, economy. Economy is uh, the primary concern of China now, and I can say to the 20 years to come. So I say that China is not to be feared now, according to my analysis and studies and researches. And uh, study, I studied, and um, my whole studies focus on China. My researches all focus on China. And I say, I can say that China is not fierce, is not posing a fear. It depends on a mutual benefit for the China and the country. Now, today, it, it, it is a purely interested economically for the, and also the short and midterm. After 2050, I don't know, it might be different. The Chinese said that. 2049, we, uh, China will rake in and restore its glory and the Chinese dream will come true. When? 2049, as they say. Why is this date? The, Xi Jinping said that this date because China will celebrate and observe the passage of 100 years about the establishment of the Chinese Republic. And after 100 years passed, uh, the status of China must be restored and uh, natural uh, Chinese status must be worldwide, global at that time. Will this dream be achieved? I don't know, but the Chinese are working on this. 2049, to achieve their ambitions, 
in the world. As for us, economy is mo most important for them now and in the oil and energy are important. 50% of the Chinese uh, oil come from this region, gas. Qatar is the second country uh, supplying China for the liquidated, liquid, liquefied gas. Uh, uh, sizable investments in the region, in energy, infrastructure, communications, transportation, uh, communication technology, all these are important for China. Uh, road and Belt Initiative, this is very important uh, for the China, and I will talk about it elaborately. But for uh, trade and commerce, China regards this re region to, be, to have more presence in the world through this initiative. Belt and Road Initiative and uh, the Gulf area can facilitate this connectivity, which is uh, very important for Chinese trade through this initiative, BRI Initiative. So China is interested in the region and in the short perspective and in the midterm, economically, purely economic interest in the area. China, the geo Economics is very important, which is more important than the geopolitical and geostrategic aspects or presence in the region. China today is imp interested in the soft rather than the hard power. We read and let's hear many people and they are uh, 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 trying to uh, scare us away and freak us about China. But people don't understand China, and sometimes uh, people and researchers are exaggerating. Uh, third, who is there in the White House? This will give you an impression how China is treated. In the White House now, a person who is uh, tougher on China than Trump. Trump used to be tough, but Biden is tougher than Trump in dealings with China. And if you don't believe me, uh, read Rosh Doshi book, read it. And he is responsible for the Chinese uh, file in the White House. And the book is everywhere in the libraries and bookstore, book stores, the long game book. It is issued in 2020, Rosh Doshi, which is entitled The Long Game and China. Attempts to, to replace American order. It's something like this, around, or, it's, or in that effect. Maybe it's not exact, but it's in that effect. As long as in the White House there are people talking that or regarding China as a threat, Many people around the world will listen to what the United States say and listen to such uh, talks and visions. They might be rightful, and to a degree that I share this with them, but uh, not completely. When it comes to Arabian Gulf, China is less motivated, threatening, danger, and, uh, than any other countries. Many countries can be of uh, threat to us, but the Chinese is still less, or to a lesser degree. If we go to Mao Zedong, they've been here in the region. But the Chinese, uh, since Mao Zedong, they were in the uh, southern, uh, when we read and analyze the existence of the Chinese, in the region, we find that they are looking about, uh, it's looking for positional, uh, positional presence, not spatial presence, which are different terms. Positional presence, looking for presence of influence, to be pre influential, but spatial, they are looking for uh, existence foothold, military, military presence, bases, security, defense. This is a spatial. Positional, they are just seeking positions in this region to achieve your interests. The Chinese had a chance to be, to have a spatial position 
and the presence spatially presence, military presence during Mao Zedong. I repeat, this affirms my saying that since its establishment in China, is they are not looking for a spatial presence, they are looking for positional presence, and the positional presence is the right of every country. All countries want to be present uh, politically, economically, but uh, not have uh, hegemony uh, or military dominance, they did not search this or look or pursue this in this area since Nazi Tong and then Ding Xi Ping, and they wanted uh, foreign currency to sell weapons to some countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, etc., to get the foreign currency to help it in its reform program. After that, Chiang Hishintao. Zeming, these focused on the economic aspects and the economic dimension of the importance of this region, especially in the 1991 when China started exporting uh, oil since 1991 and onwards with the beginning of it, China ha was uh, ha suffered deficit in oil and energy and uh, the Gulf became important to it. Now, Xi Jinping uh, enhanced, reinforced, reinforced the, uh, this economic through this, his initiative BRI, which reflects as uh, approached by Ra Rosh Doshi, and I believe that this initiative, uh, this is the grand strategy of China. And if it succeeds, Americans are stipulating to and doing everything to, stip, to weaken and uh, uh, fail this initiative because this will interrupt the Chinese dream. But so we understand now that the main concern of China is uh, ch economy. So what does it? What does China want from the region here? What does it want from us? As long as it wants economy, so security and stability in this region is a Chinese demand. Security, stability of this region is a Chinese demand. China doesn't want fear, threat, instability in this region because it is benefiting from this region in, uh, economically, investments, oil, trade, moving to China. So it wants uh, wants uh, Hormoz uh, Straits to be open. When I'm talking uh, about the Gulf, I'm not uh, excluding Iraq and uh, Iran. They are part of the Chinese perspective of to the region. So when I talk about the Gulf, I include uh, Iraq and Iran. Because Iran, they are not excluding these two countries. So this region important for China to be safe, security, and uh, stability. Doesn't want the uh, Hormoz Straits to be closed or to uh, there are instability or military turmoils and uh, battles in the region. China is uh, expected to consume energy uh, progressively till 2050 to achieve that Chinese dream. So not ready to uh, waste this chance by instigating uh, fears, uh, problems, troubles, and instability in the region. So China is interested in this. So we find China is not criticizing the uh, American presence in the region and not competing with that presence opposite to what others expect. Uh, China, many people say that China is competing. No, 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 no. They don't think in this way. They are smart. They are very, very smart. They are, they are riding or benefiting freely. I'm riding the vehicle freely. So why should I waste that opportunity. This is insane approach by analysts. No, at all, this is not true. At all, China wants America to stay here as long as this will guarantee the interest of China. But why? Because America is, uh, is uh, keeping this country sec secure, stable, and that's what China wants.
So the presence, the American presence here is very important for China, whether to uh, protect uh, Hormoz and the navigation movement, or also in uh, combating uh, the terrorist and jihadi uh, groups. China fears these groups. China, Xiang, uh, uh, is a province, and there are many people who are influenced by the ISIS and Al Qaeda ideology. They don't want to have foothold. They don't want these groups to have any foothold that affect and impact China negatively. And you remember when the Arabs spring in the Middle East, the Chinese, they refused and they were scared and they closed the internet. Arab spring would not appear on uh, internet, the Chinese internet. If you write Arab spring, it will not appear. Orange, uh, jasmine, revolution, colored uh, revolutions, uh, uh, Tunisian uh, revolution, they will not appear when you are searched for them on the internet. So they are very sensitive to these revolutions because they, it is big population and they don't want to have that revolution thought and they have the right. So these are elements to focus on economy and technology. So China Economic focus is very important. So see why, what is China doing? China says holding partnerships, not alliances. It says, I depend on partnerships, not alliances. The idea or the term of alliance is not present at all in the Chinese ideology. They don't have this term. They have partnerships, which is of different types, even with Russia called, uh, it called uh, uh, Russian-Chinese partnership for a different era. They don't have this alliance. They have the partnership. But why is this? Because alliance has military dimension. Partnership has non-military dimension. They want to say, to tell the world, I am, I don't want to enter into alliances that will uh, put defense duties on me. I want to create a mutual benefit for me and for others. If that includes some security, yes, no, why not? But I don't want to have that commitment, the military commitment. The last point, if you look at the Chinese, and their aspirations towards the Arabian Gulf, they want to maintain relations with all, friendly, amicably, and mutual respect. And they don't want to be biased. They want to keep neutral. So if you, it will not take sides. China will not. If you ask it to come, to side you with you against Iran, it will not. So it will not take sides. It will be neutral. It will maintain that neutral position. China with Iran, Saudi Arabia in the middle. Comprehensive strategic partnership. And we will keep that strategic partnership with both sides. With Iran also. It is with Iran and the Iranian nuclear plan. But with a peaceful uh, program with Iran. But, but with the Houthis, it is against with the Houthis. They are siding with Emirates and Saudi. It is always on the line. It's a neutral. It wants to please all because it recognizes its import, the importance of its interests in the region. It doesn't want to take sides against one another. And the, I keep now the to Mr. Muhammad. This policy is really interesting. Thank you very much, Doctor, for this, which is really rich and deep. You talked about many things that China is a superpower in the making. Many elements are making to make China if be effective in the world. Xi Jinping leadership and uh, the importance date of 2049 to achieve its dreams and ambitions, the importance of the Arabian Gulf economic, uh, importance of the Gulf for China, and, and the wants, uh, China wants this uh, region to be stable, and uh, a please all policy is also of interest to others. Let's focus on the B 
BRI initiative, when we are looking at the line or this BRI on this map, this line doesn't pass through or go through the Gulf states. How can the Gulf states benefit from the developmental dimensions of this? As for this initiative, they know. They are as if telling they are traveling in a ship and they are building the ship while traveling. It's not complete yet. The building of this ship is not complete. You are building a ship while sailing. You are building, your ship is building, while building. This is the BRI initiative. It's not complete. That's why it was called. Then they changed the name. And put some lines on the map that will go through the Gulf. These are illusionary lines. The, this initiative, the Built and Road initiative, are illusionary. But, but when you connect from China to Africa, this, this naval or sea route, the, everything is supposed to be part of it. So this road is not mean that we are outside this line and all those surrounding that line. So you are, there's a route, land route. In the land, there are railways, but also connecting cities, though it is not passing through. As for this initiative, Belt and Road Initiative, I believe that this initiative is the grand strategy of China. What people don't understand about this initiative, <clears throat> that it reflects the Chinese intelligence. Because if you notice where this in initiative, where it is going, you will pay attention, you will see that this, it doesn't, it doesn't come to uh, places where Russian or American influence there. It doesn't want to have battles with the Americans. So when, so uh, this initiative is not including the Gulf because it doesn't want to uh, challenge the American presence. But, uh, but this region will remain as part of the bigger perspective of the China. For example, Central Asia, there are areas, and it, it passes through areas not under the American influence. So China wants to create positional presence because the Chinese in the initiative are moving towards uh, towards uh, a free uh, foreign if Western influence of free countries. So the relation between Russia and China, they are friends. No, 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 no. They have differences. No. So this even the, it shows on the surface that they are friends, but the relations with between China and uh, Russia is not that much. And uh, this partnership or this relation and this approach now is uh, situational, short term, tactical, not long term. Both China fear Russia and Russia fears China. They had battles and wars before, so they are scared, fear each other. So, but they are clever. So when uh, in that initiative they go uh, or uh, move away from the areas where Russia has influence or America in East or uh, Southern East Asia uh, is kept away in that initiative. So it doesn't want to challenge the American or the Russian influence. So these areas where no influence of Western powers, China come to these areas, invest and build. And these investments are just debts and liabilities. These countries will pay China later on, and it goes to another country. So this area becomes as a satellite for the Chinese because they have to pay China back. Uh, that's what we call debt trap. Debt trap. Whether we agree or disagree, I'm not saying that China wants this, but this is, but this is the logical progress of things. The economic driver 
is my way to achieve influence. And that's what China is doing in this uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Gulf states can benefit from this initiative and many other countries, but you should always be careful not to fall in the debt trap and aggressive in this. Took a big part of Tajikistan. Vast, vast mountainous borderline from Tajikistan was taken by China. Sri Lanka also, they took also a big part from Sri Lanka for 100 years. The, China, the, the Indians are scared. This is military presence. But this is an opportunity. I don't say that there is military presence, but it is an opportunity, as I know and follow. But the opportunity is there. And in the future also, or the military presence in the future is also there, and that's what scares the Indians. China wants to move from the American areas of influence, yet there are Western strategies to face and encounter the presence or eminence of China. Biden announced its uh, uh, policies about the Indo-Pacific Oceans. Can these strate strategies or policies affect the uh, B BR initiative? And in case it affects, what is the re interaction or reaction or the Chinese response? But as I told you, uh, the Chinese are smart. And it came to Pakistan, for example. It's not a country or to a part which is not an influence for the Americans. Uh, Iran. It's also not an area uh, under the influence of the American. Far away from us, a little bit, yes, it is there. G Gulf ports are all there, part of the Belt and, and Road Initiative. It's not that bad. It's connecting these ports and uh, routes where China is controlling in some of these uh, places. So in the countries or states where money is and Chinese investments, China can use its military power to control these uh, ports to a level and using them uh, according to their legitimate uses, if they, of course. But in the Indo-Pacific oceans, they are creating big influence in that area. And these uh, alliances, uh, they are against uh, China. And the Indians uh, are uh, key players in these alliances against China. Uh, uh, America created that China threat. Yeah. And uh, all the whole world accepted this. It might not be true. But you know, this is propaganda. The superpower, the controlling one, when it, it sees or notices that another country or power is emerging and can pose a challenge or be competitive with it, it will create its uh, propaganda. Yes, in some areas and regions, there are some Chinese threats. But the Indians, because they have uh, ideological, intellectual, uh, geographical differences and disputes with China, and there are wars with China, until now there are border wars with China. This country, cre India created string, a string of pearls. This is theory or doctrine created by India. That is uh, China is creating uh, in ports in Jawadir and other, and Burma and many other, and Maldives now. Now the Maldives is now under the threat of the debt trap. I so these are kind of like bases and military presence of China, like a string of pearls, connecting its uh, naval power to make uh, China a super naval power. This is possible, not rule excluded, but as a Chinese specialist, China doesn't want this. It, it is there. For example, they sent, lately, for example, they sent a military ship, not warship. It is a military connected to the satellites. And uh, they have to accept 
or to take approval from Sri Lanka to enter that area. So the Indians are a little bit uh, have concerned. They have some concerns, but they are exaggerating this. Yet we acknowledge their right. But as observers and researchers and followers of this region, there is exaggeration. I would conclude with one question about the military lately. There are these developments in the Chinese policy by using the military tool in addition to the economic and the diplomatic. In the Middle East, after the withdrawal of the Americans from Afghanistan, there was, and that said that United States will withdraw completely from the Middle East and go to East Asia. But some others say that there is some change in the mechanism exploitment. Let's take it for granted that the United States completely withdrew from the Middle East. Will China be able to fill this vacuum and to undertake the burdens in parallel with its interests in the region? This is a great question. A great question. Can the Chinese fill the gap or the vacuum this is now no in the future maybe now no why because the vacuum needs a presence the chinese still now are not there in the region at all uh, in the military sense in the military sense no um, chinese presence the military no better than me they are there in djibouti Djibouti, which is, which is a place or an area for all countries, Japan, America, Germany, Spain, Saudi Arabia, I don't know if the, France, China is there. So is it, can we consider Djibouti as a, a sphere of influence for China? When you are alone or solely present in that area, this is your sphere of influence. But in Djibouti, no, because Djibouti is doing its business in this way. You know, Djibouti is in debt for China. 40% of the uh, Djibouti debts is for the G Chinese. The Chinese base there in Djibouti is very small compared to the Americans. So no military presence of China in that, in that big sense. And that's why I say it cannot fill the vacuum. And there is no political will in China to fill the vacuum in this region. The Chinese, smart. They don't want to scare the world. They want to, on, they based on the philosophy of the peaceful development and the growth. They don't want to threaten the world from our development. Otherwise, Sparta, uh, when Sparta invaded Athena, because, because Sparta was afraid of the emergence and the eminence and the development of, of Athena. And that book, Graham Allison, it's there in the book, he talked about. And there are emergence of countries. And where it, it, it studied in his book the major wars in the world. And he found that 80% of the world in the major worlds because of in, in the fall of that trap of fear of. And he reached that there is no escape that China and America one day will come and fall in that trap. And Harsh Minor is a realist person. His thinking is realist. He is using the military power, and he thinks this way. So can China is ready, or is it China ready? Is it China ready? No, it doesn't have the power. There is no the military presence, no will, political will for that. They uh, don't have 
the Gulf states also don't have that acceptance of the China. We accept America more than any other country. Amer America now became as a model accepted by us after Britain came, America came. <clears throat> Some people say, and these studies are there, look, look at the America and the British in the Gulf states. This region, there was a British existence. America was there benefiting from distance. Now, if we take the parallel or the analog, uh, uh, Britain that time is like America today. And America in that time is like a China during that time. America was benefiting from investment and oil. Why should we come? and have headache to come to this region and uh, maintain the security and stability, let the British continue there. When uh, British withdrew, America had to come to protect itself. The same is said about the China. The Chinese are benefiting in, in the presence of the Americans in this region while protecting the America. If America leaves, then China will be obliged to come, will be obligated. Can China come? Yes. Can, does China have that potentials and capabilities? Yes. Two elements or factors that make me say that the Chinese might come to this region. And these two factors first, if China continues and it's a big need for oil and energy exported from this region, Otherwise, so if it has alternatives for this supply or lessened dependence on this gas and oil from the region, and, and uh, the gas and oil continue to be the pivotal uh, factor in the development of the Chinese, uh, this, we say that this is a key element. And the second, if there is vacuum, or emptiness, and China had to fill it. Will it come to defend the region? No, it will come here only to defend its interests. At the end, on his behalf, Dr. Sultan Naimi, the general director of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Search, great thanks and grateful thanks to our distinguished Professor Mohammed bin Hawaidin, and to you, dear audience, hopefully we'll meet again on other lectures, in other lectures. Thank you very much. See you soon in other lectures.